Hey guys, so it's Thursday, day number four of the week. We're going to be reading Birdhouse for Rent. It's a book by Harriet Seifert, and the paintings are by Donald Dreyfus. I am a birdhouse. I was put in the ground at the beginning of July. As you can see, I am vacant. I have no tenants. That means that no one is there. All summer, lots of birds flew over my roof. Some even stopped to rest. I was sure the bluebird who landed on my perch would come in, but he did not. A starling poked his beak into my doorway, but he did not step inside. Without looking, what color is the birdhouse? Yellow. Finally, in September, I had some tenants. They were wasps. I could hear the wasps hum as they built a paper nest on my ceiling. Just look at it. It's amazing. In October, when the weather got cold, the wasps left. Chipmunks moved in. Oh, what messy tenants. The chipmunks dragged in leaves, grass, sticks, and more acorns than I could count. After a few weeks, I was ready for the chipmunks to leave but they stayed all winter. Where we live, we have a ton of chipmunks. I have a chipmunk burrow right outside of my patio. November was blowy. In December, it rained a lot. January was icy. Heavy snow fell in February. Unfortunately, a March storm snapped my post. Fortunately, the chipmunks vacated. In early April, a farmer put me on top of a new post. A few house hunting birds stopped, but they didn't stay. One day, a chickadee peeked into my doorway. He hopped all over my roof and examined me from all angles. He seemed to find everything to his liking. He called to another bird who was perched on a nearby branch. I thought that must be Mrs. Chickadee. She came right over. She saw the place was snug and dry. The entrance was well above the floor. Better for keeping out wind, rain, and enemies. She seemed pleased. And so they moved in. At first, Mr. and Mrs. Chickadee spent most of their days out of the house finding insects. But after a week or two, she stayed close to home and he did the food collecting. Mrs. Chickadee was building a nest. After three days of hard work, Mrs. Chickadee nestled down. The next morning, I heard Mr. Chickadee calling softly. Mrs. Chickadee gave him an eager welcome, but did not get up. When she arched her back to reach for a nice juicy caterpillar, I saw an egg. The next day, there was another egg, then another, and then another. Finally, after 10 eggs in 10 days, Mrs. Chickadee was done. For weeks, Mrs. Chickadee had been spending nearly all her time inside the house. Now she stayed outside all day, leaving her eggs deserted. But she did cover them before she flew off, so an egg thief wouldn't eat them. Unfortunately, the farmer's cat was too smart for Mrs. Chickadee, and I watched him steal three of her eggs. Oh no. Finally, the eggs started to hatch. After two days, there were seven baby birds. The babies always had their mouths wide open, begging to be fed. Altogether, I counted 600 feedings a day. Could you imagine eating 600 times a day? My boys love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. 
but I could not imagine making 600 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches a day. When the babies were a few days old, the cat returned looking for more to eat. Mr. and Mrs. Chickadee made a lot of noise and chased him away. The babies were safe. As the babies grew, the place became quite crowded. I could hear little cheeps all day long as if babies were saying, when can we go outside? And they did in early June when they were big and plump and could fly. They came in and out for a few days and then they left my house completely. I wonder who the next tenants will be. All right, guys. So this is your Thursday book, Birdhouse for Rent.